Hello! I hope you guys are doing well and I'm so excited for this video. We are going to be working some magic and transforming this fresh rose into this pressed rose and this too. And don't worry if your fresh rose looks a little <clears throat> less than fresh. I'll show you how to press these in part two of this video. So stay tuned. So the first way we're going to press the rose is in profile. So this is how the rose is going to look if you are looking exactly at it from the side. And yes, this will likely happen to the stem of your rose. It's just a super thick and moisture filled part of the rose. And if you don't like the discoloration, then you can just fold the sepals down as part of your pressing process. The first thing that we're going to have to do is to fluff up the rose. So to do that, just gently wiggle your fingers around the rose petals and be very gentle, working your way from the outermost petals to the innermost petals. And you don't need to work your way all the way to the center of the rose because we are going to be removing those innermost petals. So you can just use your thumb and your index finger to just pinch away those petals in the middle. And then we're going to also do the same thing to what's left to the center of the rose, which is all the reproductive parts of the rose. We are going to be removing them as well. Once your rose is all cleaned up, you can just lay it flat on your press and roll over the top layer of your paper and close your presses. I know your press is going to be super thick but you don't need to put too much weight on because it is the first time it's in the press and we don't want to have any of our petals splitting. So just light pressure and every day you can tighten the press as it goes. That way your rose is going to stay perfectly intact. The next way we are going to press the rose is fully opened and we are going to do this by taking it apart petal by petal. So just like the other method, we are going to have to fluff up this rose. So gently wiggle your fingers around the petals and remove the innermost petals. But this time we are leaving all the reproductive parts of the flower because we will be pressing those as well. Next, we are going to press this rose petal by petal. So we're going to be removing each petal and giving it its own space on the press. How many petals you press is going to be up to you. And that is going to determine how many layers your pressed rose will have. So the more petals equals the more layers. Once all the parts are pressed, you can take apart the sepals and leave just the center of the rose. And then we're going to start the tedious process of gluing each petal back on. You can glue this directly onto your final artwork or onto a base like I am here. What you're going to do is you're going to glue the largest petals down first and slowly work your way up to the smaller petals. This method works on all types of roses. So here I'm doing this on a yellow spray rose, but you can do it on garden roses, wild roses. Once all the petals are glued back on, you can use a dollop of liquid glue to glue back on the center of the rose. And then it's all done. You can press a rose fully opened by not taking it apart petal by petal, but I find that that method usually works better if your rose is a little older because then the petals are a little more flexible and it can fully open without snapping apart. But I also do find that the result ends up being a little more wrinkly. <laughs> 
And personally, I am not a fan of my rows ending up this way. So that's why I always like to press my rows petal by petal if I do want to press it opened. Okay, I know this is a lot to take in and that's why I created this for you. You can use it to see what way works for you and, and you can build up your own archive of pressing flowers. Before you print it out, you can just copy and paste in the flower that you are pressing and check which method you are using to press that flower. Then once you print it out, you can write the name of the flower you're pressing and the date in which you put it in the press. And because you do have to check up on your flowers once they're in the press, you can fill in the dates of every time you checked in on that flower and the right hand side is for you to mark down any notes that you have so maybe this method didn't work or you did something special it's just a way for you to create your own archive for pressing flowers i like to think that there is no right or wrong way to press flowers there's only a way that works for you and a way that doesn't work for you so this is to help you figure out that way Pressing flowers is totally and uniquely your personal preference. I will always be here to share my tips and tricks that I learned from pressing flowers, but I also want to encourage you to explore and be free and figure out your own ways as well. So if you are interested in downloading and using this pressed flower guide, please check out the link in the description box and you can download it from there. I hope you guys found this video helpful and I hope you find the guide to be helpful as well. And I will see you in part two of this video where I will be teaching you how to press the flowers that aren't exactly the freshest. So I will see you then. Take care. Bye.